Okay, ETs, bottom line, most of them, well, not all of them, but a lot of them are human. We have been severely, severely misled. We hear words all the time like aliens and creatures, and we take it for granted that we're dealing with something fundamentally inhuman. Nothing could be further than the truth. What we're actually dealing with is that the universe itself is sentient, the galaxy is programmed to create biological life, and that biological life will be hominid in our galaxy. It will have a head, it will have eyes, nose, mouth. There's very few that don't. It will have two arms, two legs, you know, opposable thumbs, all that kind of stuff. Um, I do have one insider who has personally handled over 2,000 different types of extraterrestrial bodies. And his job was basically just to autopsy them and try to identify organ systems. So I have a lot of different descriptions of what different types of ETs look like. And I can tell you that probably the most divergent one that he ever saw was kind of like a jellyfish hominid. And it basically had no real discernible facial features. Uh, it, it, the body looked like clear gel except for a spot in the head and a spot in the middle of the chest. And when he autopsied it, he wasn't able to identify anything resembling an organ system. It was all just gel. Hmm. Uh, but most of the beings that are out there are human-like or actually human-looking. And in fact, we have been visited by multiple human groups, and they all have tinkered with our DNA. We are like a genetics wonderland. Our DNA is, has been spliced and re-spliced and tinkered with so many different races. There's actually 40 different extraterrestrial groups, most of whom are human or human-like, and some of which look just like people on Earth. There's one group that looks exactly like the Maoris from New Zealand, for example. There's, other, there's a couple other groups that look just like Asians on Earth, I, I now have found out there is a group that looks like black people. They look like uh, the Zulu tribe, actually, that, that type of a physique, except that they're really tall and really skinny. Um, so all the different types of people that are on Earth have extraterrestrial families. All the different races that we have here on Earth have extraterrestrial families. And on a secret level, they all these different groups, there's about 40 of them all together, have all presented to us, and meaning our secret government, Genetic evidence, physical evidence, holographic evidence on these little iPads that they have that they show us movies on, that they are the guys that made us. How do we and tell? They, they how, can't all be right. Yeah, how, how do we know when uh, one is standing next to us? Are we able to tell the difference? Is there something that sticks out? In some cases, it would be absolutely impossible not to know that you're in front of something very, very unusual. Some of these people, that there are micro ETs that are literally no bigger than about a centimeter to an inch in height. There are some, in fact, my guy that handled 2,000, the largest one that he ever saw was about 45 feet tall and looked like it was made out of rocks. Um, but the average uh, groups that we see we're actually a little bit taller than average. The, the overall average, if you really wanted to standardize it, of height is about waist high for us, or maybe a little bit taller. There are obviously other groups that are taller than us, some of which are significantly taller. There's a, a range of like 12 to 13 feet is fairly common. There's a range of about 8 to 9 feet is fairly common. But we're actually among the taller groups. Um, now, most of them do look predominantly human, but you're going to have some discrepancies. You're going to have, for example all different types of skin color. And by that, I mean every type of color in the rainbow spectrum, if you then take it and turn it into a pastel. So you have people with pastel blue skin, pastel pink, pastel yellow, pastel green, pastel orange. Uh, so that's very common. A lot of them do have eyes that look larger than ours, so that would be one giveaway. Right. Uh, a lot of them are hairless, but actually a lot of them do have hair. It is common for them to have a larger head than we do as they get more advanced. Um, the elongated skull is fairly common. Uh, 
The gray type is actually not that common, and those are typically uh, more along the lines of an Android, like a, a genetically grown drone. It's like a, they call them programmable life forms. So grays, that type does not usually evolve naturally. They're, they're genetic uh, experiments, basically. They, they don't have a soul or a conscience? They're just a machine? It's sort of like an advanced biological robot, yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, they can right. be programmed to perform certain tasks. I mean, they are sentient, but they're not, they would not have uh, a typical type of soul evolution like we would think of. There are multiple ET groups, and it's not like the Lone Ranger where, okay, he wears the white mask, he's the good guy, and the other guy wears the black costume, and he's the bad guy. Okay. I got you. <laughs> I mean, basically what we're dealing with is different groups with different agendas, some of which are more positive than others. And there are also positive beings that are multidimensional that largely stay out of the way. And most of these ETs that I've been talking to you about and describing are not even aware that these higher dimensional beings exist. The higher dimensional beings are working sort of in a, in a very interesting veiled fashion that is not obvious to most of the ET groups that would look human. Right. But within the ET groups that look human, they have competing agendas, competing needs. And even within these societies, of course, you're going to have certain people who are divergent characters. So you'll have like your criminals and you'll have your murderers and you'll have your crooks who are going to go and try to steal something. So you can't just say that like, oh, well, these are the, the blue aliens and the blue aliens are the good guys and the red aliens are the bad guys. It doesn't work like that. It's a very vast, complex sociological problem to solve. But what I can say is that there are alliances with different factions of ETs working with different factions on Earth, and the good guys are winning now by a significant degree, and it is building up to something that's going to be like a political, geopolitical, worldwide moment of truth. And we're probably not going to get disclosure immediately when this happens, but it probably won't take very long once it does. And let me ask you this. Are there any heads of state that are actual ETs and, and not, uh, not human? For instance, Dick Cheney, ET <laughs> or human? <laughs> and, okay, I, well. and I'm being serious. <laughs> don't laugh. Don't laugh. You know, uh, you know, uh, you know. I can look at Obama. Okay. I can look at Obama and say alien, pretty, pretty much, pretty freely. But well, I w again, I would use the term extraterrestrial because alien is like the N word. Once you talk to these people, they don't like that word at all. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I can because see that. Because they're Let's, families, right? Yeah, they got, yeah, yeah. Mothers Let, and children. Sure. You know, yeah, perfectly yeah. Perfectly good people if you talk to them. Right. Right. So Dick Cheney. E.T. <laughs> you know, are, are, is, is there any, uh, you know, string pullers that are actual uh, E.T.'s? Well, if I were to answer that question to the fullest extent of my knowledge, and then this all became public and disclosure, that could actually come back to haunt me and bite me in the ass. Well, but you're not answering. It's going to do. Say, okay. I will say truthfully. <laughs> As far as I know, no visible elected leaders who are heads of state are extraterrestrial humans. That being said, my knowledge is there's about 10 to 18,000 of them on Earth at any one time. And I do have some information that suggests that some people who work in the governments are, in fact, extraterrestrial humans. But they are not reptilians and they are not shapeshifters. Nobody's biology can do that. The only type of shapeshifter that exists that I've ever been aware of from all the different people I've spoken to is AI. There are certain types of AI that are based on nanites, which are tiny little robots that can assemble in any shape they want. The United States did have a huge problem with the nanites, which they solved in the 1970s. There was a time where nanite humanoids were actually going into the White House and were pooling down into carpets and things like that. And they put some very advanced technology inside the White House that basically prevents the nanites from being able to do their little uh, mechanical, electromechanical handshake that allows them to build into structures. It's essentially like a force field that keeps them from being able to get in. And so we've predominantly dealt with the AI problem. 
most of the AI, in fact, as far as I know, all the AI has been essentially shooed away from the earth for now. So there is no such thing as a biological shape-shifting organism. And that is, a unfortunately, a very grotesque distortion of truth that's been promulgated by many people out there who really don't know anything. And I'm not saying that they are bad people. They just got bad information. Have the larger number of good ETs overpowered the smaller number of negative ones? And I guess I'm going to follow up with that question. What is the number? What is the ratio? The ratio of good ETs to bad ETs is significantly in favor of good ETs. One conservative estimate, and this is just the group that is the groups that are immediately politically involved with us in our local area, is six bad groups versus about 50 positive groups. So the negative groups are a lot less. Now, uh, when you're dealing with negative groups, interestingly enough, some of these negative groups also are the most physiologically divergent from us in terms of how they look. And that might be part of why they can dehumanize us because you do have uh, mantis looking people that essentially have legs and arms. They, their body looks hominid from the neck down but then they have essentially an insect head with compound eyes and mandibles. Uh, so that would be a very, very disturbing being to see in front of you. Right. Uh, another type is there are actual reptilians. And one of the types of reptilians does have a head that looks exactly like a Komodo dragon or the head of any of a number of reptiles, like maybe an iguana. Right. Um, not quite like an iguana, but okay. If you go and you look at this uh, movie that was made by the guy, the movie trailer for the guy, the Wachowskis, that did, uh, I can't really say guys anymore, right? But right. <laughs> the Wachowskis have this movie coming out in the spring called Jupiter Ascending. And if you watch the movie trailer, it's very edgy how much they're disclosing in that trailer. And one of the things you see in the trailer is a reptilian in which you take a reptile head and stick it on a hominid body. Now, there are people that look just like that, except that they don't have wings. The wings thing is, is a misperception. Then you also have reptoids, which have reptilian-like features, including scales and vertical slit pupils, but their heads would be more like what we would think of as a gray, where it's a large head, large almond-shaped eyes, but with the vertical slit pupils, and they have more like a nose and mouth whereas these other groups actually just have a snout and teeth, and they don't have any type of human-looking nose and mouth as we would normally think of it. Have you seen, with your insiders, with this type of information, have you seen photographs and, and, and such? There is one photograph that has leaked uh, from a guy who was an Area 51 insider who recently died, and he leaked a picture of an orange and this was a dead orange, and the orange is, is a group that looks like greys, but they're actually very positive and very loving people. Um, that is an authentic photograph. And so if you go dig that reference up, and I, I'll try to find it for you. I have it in my notes. Okay. The problem is that the cabal is essentially in control of our space program, and there is a vastly lethal force that prevents people from pulling any type of data like photographs out. Even the level of difficulty that Snowden had in getting files out of the NSA on a thumb drive to try to get things out of the space program is basically impossible. Once you join the space program, if you ever get to come back to earth at all, it's not for a 20 year period of time. And they're going to check every single inner and outer nook and crevice of your body before you ever get welcomed back into our society. And the people that are off, off planet, they do not have access to our internet. They do not have access to any news from the earth. They don't know anything about what's happening on earth. They are kept in the strictest secrecy and people from earth who interact with them are not allowed to tell them anything about anything that's going on. And there are millions of people that work off planet. They have been taken from the earth a lot of them in the 1950s, they had a population boom. They've had a lot of children. There's a lot of cloning going on. There's a lot of these places off planet where you walk around and you see dozens and dozens of people with exactly the same face. 
Oh, interesting. So, interesting. Yeah. And what what about uh what about the moon? The moon is absolutely loaded with extraterrestrial encampments all on the dark side. Uh the main base that we have on there is called LOC or Lunar Operations Center. And that is where people from our group and other groups actually rendezvous before they go elsewhere. Um, there were some very nasty ancient battles on the moon. Some of those debris fields are still left intact as a reminder of these various ET groups not to war with each other and why they shouldn't. But there are groups that have had battles with each other that could go on for 8,000 years. They've been hating each other and fighting with each other. And they may literally have encampments on the dark side of the moon that are only a couple kilometers apart from each other. And they keep very good borders, but... Uh, you know, the, the moon, if you were to see the dark side of the moon, just with any type of typical telescope or anything like that, it literally looks like Manhattan at night. 